I'm Chosen Architect, and this is all the mods of Volcano Block. So I've done a little bit of um, off-camera work, um, not to meme or anything. Well, maybe just a little bit, uh, but I added uh, some more platforms, as you can see, and kind of cleared up some stuff because I wasn't really liking the way that uh, this was going. Um, and I don't, I don't like these wind generators here either. So I was testing some uh, some new things for some platforms because I still have the oil rig in mind here. It's just the shape is going to have to change to, to better fit modded Minecraft and the way everything works. Um, and I was testing these out. These are the andesite scaffoldings. These are new to create to the new version. And these things are amazing. Like they look like this normally and they work like scaffolding, but they can break with just punching them. But when you place them down as a slab or on the side of a block, these are so cool. Like they, they do this, like this is really cool looking and it's going to look really good with some like stairs next to them and like some blocks being changed. Of course, these are, these blocks are going to change and everything like that. Uh, but this looks, this looks really good. I'm, I'm liking the way this is going to turn out. Um, and this is going to be ultimately the platforms. Uh, and then I think I'm going to extend out here and then I'm going to get these wind generators moved to the corners out here. Um, so that way we've moved these out of the centralized part of the building. Now, outside of that, I need to get a tree farm set up. And I think create early on is going to be one of the best ways to do that. And that'll allow us to branch out our power. <laughs> branch, get it? Uh, we're going to be able to branch our power out uh, by turning that uh, that wood into charcoal and thus giving ourselves an infinite supply of uh, burnable material. So as you can see, the fruit of my labors have paid off and uh, I now have all of the power transferred over here. It did require quite a few energy pipes because I'm running them along here. As of right now, I uh, don't have any sort of wireless access to power just yet, but we will eventually have that as I'm still very early on in this pack, believe it or not. Um, but this is definitely going to jumpstart us. So we now have renewable power, uh, and, uh, let's get focused now, I think on hooking this back up and then starting the tree farm. That's going to be really fun. Now for this, I'm going to be using create to set this up and it may seem a little daunting at first because uh, to be able to set this up, we need deployers, not technically there are other ways we could play saplings, but I think the easiest way is going to be using, uh, deployers from create itself. And this is the setup right here. We're going to need brass and brass. Normally you have to go through a create process to get brass, but not in this pack. No, no, no. We can just make brass dust, which means we need copper and zinc. So if we use the same method we've been using for getting more uh, duplicating our ore, all we got to do is make ourselves a hammer. Well, assuming that we have some sticks, make yourself a hammer. And then we're going to take copper that we've had building up and we're gonna get some dust from that. And then we need zinc um, to uh, to crush up. And that will allow us to have brass quite easily. We just combine it together and now we have brass dust. And then we just need to kind of spread it out and wait for it to smelt. Look at that. That is some easy brass. Now that's honestly the hardest part about getting this thing set up. Uh, everything else we're gonna need is just some glue and some saws from Create, because we're gonna be using a contraption in order to set this up. Um, so saws just utilize plates. I've already made a bunch of plates just using hammers. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, and using the hammer from immersive engineering specifically. And then of course we need to also make polished rose quartz. That is just the quartz that we have built up. We don't need much of it either. And then sandpaper. And uh, we just need to interact with this in our hand. So to make sandpaper, well, we're probably going to need a couple of them. I don't know if one can can actually do eight. Put it in our offhand. Either or will work. And we just rub them together. And bam, I have myself quartz. Now I've covered create a lot in the past. And I think in this particular pack, uh, this is going to be one of the easiest ways to get a tree farm up and running. Uh, especially this early on. Now, this is where we're going to take a little bit of a hit. Uh, we can't actually make the brass plates with the other method that we were using, using the immersive hammer. We have to use the other hammer. Um, so yes, this is going to be a little lossy. So we are going to be losing uh, a little bit of our resources in doing this. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it for only the couple that we're going to need. We don't need very many 
of the, uh, I, I would say even three deployers will be more than enough. So this fella just showed up and I know ice is going to be a point of contention here in this mod pack um, as getting it. Well, there's a couple of ways to do it, but uh, this is probably the easiest way to get it. This guy is trading ah. packed ice and packed ice is one of the variants that we actually need in order to make a blast chiller. Uh, which is one of the easiest ways, of course, to get ice, but you need ice in order to make it. So, yeah, I, I know the probably one of the better ways of getting ice would be to probably use uh, the alchemistry mod that's in here by utilizing water. You get water from using an atomizer, and these things are really easy to make. Uh, but that would be the easiest way to get started in ice, but I just got really lucky and just got some packed ice. That's going to allow me to get into thermal later on, and uh, that's going to be really, really handy. Anyways, back to the mob farm. So I now have all of the deployers ready to go, and I just need to uh, get some lights added. By the way, to get the, prevent mobs from spawning, underneath here, I did go ahead and make a mega torch. This prevents all of the mobs from spawning, hostile mobs, except those hostile mobs that spawn from like the dreadful dirt and stuff like that. That still allows mobs to spawn. Now, I've been thinking, what kind of sapling do I want to use? Well, I know that spruce saplings are going to give us the most amount of logs, uh, but we might end up with a sapling issue. Uh, and an oak can just grow, you know, as, as much as it needs. It, it doesn't need any special space requirements. So I think oak is what I'm going to go with for right now. Later on, we can also transmute um, the different tree types using Batania. And so I'm not super worried about what particular type of log this is, but let's go to get some of this built. So I have three mechanical saws because I have the deployers. That means that the places that I put the deployers uh, where they place the sapling is going to be the same correlation to where the saws at. Uh, and we're going to need a way to power this. So this is where a water wheel is going to go. So I'm going to have this on a raised bed like this. And this is really all the size we're going to need. Um, we are going to need, I think, uh, a little bit further out. So just like this, and I'm placing it on the side here because I, I also want some more contraptions to potentially go over here as well. But this should be the size that everything can reach, of course, including the centermost part. Um, and then we're going to need something very special that makes this whole thing work. That is a mechanical bearing. Um, so a mechanical bearing allows this whole thing to actually work. Um, and anything we place on top of it can be spun. Uh, so if I place this here, and then if I was to technically place uh, some sort of block formation on top of it, such as this, and I use some glue, of course, this main block is already glued to this, but if I connect these together, and then I click this, it should, once we have some water placed down in here, and of course, I can get this spinning any direction, just depending on which side of I put the water on, I want it spinning uh, counterclockwise which is the opposite, of course, of the way a clock normally works. So let's go ahead and do that. I want it spinning to the right, and you can see that it's activated because I had right-clicked it. And then, of course, right-clicking again stops the contraption. Um, and there's a way you can turn this on and off by having a shaft that uh, you can shut this off and on with, but right now, right-clicking should be able to get the job done. Now, to remove your glue, instead of right-clicking to connect, you just punch the connection and uh, it will remove the glue. So let's build this contraption. And there's actually some interesting mechanics that I recently learned that we can use in this particular setup. So first things first, let's get our saws placed in. So because this is going to be spinning this way, we just need to have these saws placed in so that way when a log's in front of it, it will harvest it down. And I liked on, the, on these particular setups, I like the back here to have the deployer uh, behind the saws. Uh, that way, after it does the harvest, it can then replant the sapling. Um, and I, that tends to work out really well. Um, so to allow me to position these in properly, I'm going to give myself some space here and then just click them in. And you can see they end up going just like that. Now, I kind of want these, I want the shafts to be facing that way, even though it really doesn't matter too much. But there we go. They made it so much easier in this version to get everything hooked together. Now, we don't need this massive like pillar in here technically we can make this look a little bit smaller by using like trap doors or anything like that i like the way trap doors look um and uh, we can just line that here but there's a couple of other things that we're going to need and that is going to be a portable storage interface we need some way to interact with this and that's where this interface comes into play now uh, the way these interfaces work is you are going to need a single block gap in between 
And this is going to be the working area where we're going to be pulling out of this machine. So it looks kind of crazy right now, but we'll simplify it here in a minute. Now, this is where I just learned this. This thing is, is amazing. This is the toolbox. Now, for one, it allows you to put things in, for example, and hit left alt and access them, right? This is a great way to uh, quickly sort your stuff if you're messing around with create. You could put a bunch of toolboxes down and access them all. It's a really useful tool. But it has a really cool function inside of these contraptions that I recently found out. And that is you can use them to filter your contraptions. Yes, you heard me correctly. You can use them to filter. This is something I've always struggled with was trying to figure out how do I send saplings to this without filling the entire inventory, right? Without using like a regulator upgrade and things like that. Well, that's where this comes into play because what you can do is you can just set the, uh, the saplings here inside of a filter and then filter your logs and filter your sticks and your apples in here and make sure you give enough space for your saplings. And then when you import in, there's only one place that your saplings can fill up. Everything else is going to be filtered. So this is so nice for that reason. Um, now that we have most of this done, let's go in and get some trap doors to connect these things together. Um, because they do need to be, you know, kind of hooked. Um, and I guess we can go ahead and just use these trap doors. Actually, do, does the create like bars and stuff? Would these look good? I actually don't know. I kind of want to do like a trap door that looks like the andesite casing, but I don't know how well that's going to function. Uh, let's just use uh, let's just use regular trap doors, right? And this is going to require oak. I don't know how much oak I have left. Hopefully enough for some trap doors. There we go. Perfect. So this I'll just place on the back side here, and this should be enough to technically make this all look like it's one cohesive unit, right? Trap doors right there. And then we'll remove the dirt. And this is what we have to do. We have to be very specific with how we put our glue. So I'm gonna glue this block to these items. And then I'm gonna glue these two items together, making sure to leave this spot here. Cause I don't want to put anything here just yet. Um, and our trap doors are technically not there as well. So we, ju we just want to make sure nothing goes here. Otherwise, a log could get pushed into this space and then it would become a part of the contraption. Um, and when I say that, it would look like this, right? You can see it's it's spotted there. And yeah, we don't need that. Um, so on the back, we're going to link this to here and then we'll link these together. And then we can link these together. It's probably a little bit more than is was needed, but this whole thing, technically, when I turn it on, should start working and spinning. You can see right here and it is going to function and it should end up hitting this guy if they stayed in the way. Um, now, now that this is set up, I need to get the saplings filtered in here. These also have new filter slots and you can put the filter in there. And whenever we put the saplings inside of this, the hand, when, it, when the contraption activates, these hands will start placing the saplings. You're going to see that now as soon as I can activate this anyways. There we go. You see, they're going to run around and place the saplings down. Perfect, right? Um, and uh, <laughs> they're also going to kill them that are down there. Good riddance. Um, now, I still need to get the filters set up for the rest of the items. Of course, this drops a couple of other things, like it drops logs, and it should drop sticks, and also the, all the berries as well that we're going to have to filter out of this. Now, the best thing to do for this is probably going to be letting it run for a moment. So I'm going to place a chute right here to just drain the uh, the product into this barrel. And then I, I'll know what to have in the filter. So we can go ahead and just start here. This is going to break that tree. The tree has now been broken. And when it reaches here, it should dump all of the ingredients out and into this barrel. So we'll start to see, yeah, there's these things. All of that has now fallen into here. Unfortunately, we didn't get any saplings, it didn't look like. Um... I'm pretty sure the saplings did not filter out. So there we go. And that that's because it's uh, replanting the saplings that it gathered. That's why it is not giving me any yet. But eventually it will. So I'm going to let this run for just a moment. And of course, we can force grow these trees real quick to make a quick jump start on this. 
but this will just run and these trees will grow you know about as fast as you know any normal tree will grow um except we don't have to worry about it and when we're working on other things this could be farming all of the logs we'll ever need for sufficient power so if you're letting it run for just a moment we can already see now all of the ingredients that we're going to need to have a filter slot for um and so with this we can go ahead and place all of these in uh, and for right now i'm going to place the most important things but there's a lot of stuff here that we really don't need but it's yeah it's not going to have a full filter slot for so I think what I might do is just take the logs out because that's the most important part, right? And we'll just end up putting two of these in here. That way we have enough stuff filtered. Uh, and I'll just put myself another storage box right here. Now, this is where the fun's going to happen. Now that I have this all filtered and set up, well, we can start to utilize all of these logs that we're generating. And uh, so what we're going to do is use functional storage, the storage drawers mod uh, that is in this pack. However, we're going to do this in an interesting way. The storage controller can actually be linked to drawers that are nearby. So we don't have to have it directly connected. So we can keep this clean and just have a drawer controller here. But I'm going to need the drawer controllers to be set up elsewhere. And what I want to do is I want to use an array of chests and I want to use the wood as fuel and also convert it into charcoal. Um, so to do this, all we gotta do is hook up some furnaces, uh, particularly in this format and we'll get them laid out and then we'll have our drawer that's just simply connected to all of them that is going to be uh producing the, the the oak that this is going to receive so if i put this here we should be able to have a line that connects to the back and the top and that is going to give it both fuel and also something to smelt and then the bottom will be connected down here and then all we need is two of these on the side right here these two are going to contain all of these little items here, like sticks and stuff, that we'll eventually want to void off. So we can go ahead and get this set up by just placing the items in so they're already filtered. And uh, now, we're going to need to talk a little bit about the configuration tool, because this is important. Um, so, this mode, if you shift right click, you can change this to locking mode. And that allows us, as you can see right here, to set these all to lock. It's very similar to using the normal drawers where you have a key, but instead your key is this tool. Now up top here, we can also set this up so that way we the saplings that we gain will go through the controller and right up top. So uh, this will make this incredibly simple as this is going to be connected to the same drawer network, meaning the saplings will just end up in here and then we'll just get funneled back in until there's too many inside of its storage and then it will no longer worry about them. So with all that filtered, here we go. So this is the storage controller. Uh, and then what I want to do is use the linking tool here to select this. And then we'll just simply select the drawers that we want it to be connected to. And now it's just going to wirelessly send the items from one location to another here. And it does have a range, but the range is quite a bit. So this is the piping array that I'm going to be going with. And as you can see, we have all of them. It's going to be pulling from the top. Uh, and that is going to send to all of these inventories. Now on the bottom, these all need to be set to extract and they're gonna pull out the charcoal. So this is, yes, it's a, it's a wood farm, but it's also going to be a charcoal farm once the charcoal starts to build up. Um, and this is going to send to the back here as well. You can see it's connected. So let's go ahead and activate that. And this will already start to pull the items out, but it's gonna take a moment in order for this to really start to build up. It really is going to take a little bit. Um, so you can see up here, that's working. That's sending all of the stuff. It does appear to be sending. And hopefully we don't end up in like some sort of deadlock because it's putting saplings in and also pulling out at the same time. We might have to add another portable storage interface because I think that is what it is currently doing. It's sort of gridlocked because it is constantly sending. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to do another portable storage interface right next to this one in order to uh, send saplings to it. So yeah, that was one thing that I was concerned with and I was wondering if that was going to happen and it did. So let's go ahead and place this here and then we'll set up the hopper on it. And that should reach, yes, it, it should send the saplings to it. And once all saplings are in there, it should move on. There it goes. So now it's working just like it should. Looks a little wonky, but I promise me, promise you it, it does work. And then for the final touches, well, we are going to need void upgrades. Um, these are going to be 
definitely necessary. Uh, for saplings, for one, we'll, we'll probably end up with too many saplings. Um, and then we're also going to need to make sure we void all of these items as well. Now, I think to make this more efficient, if on the pipe upgrade, we put the, uh, the improved pipe upgrade in here, we should be able to set this to round robin. That's a lot more efficient way of doing this. This should evenly divide all of the, uh, all of the logs that we generate here through all of the furnaces. And as you can see, now this is going to start working a lot better. Now, one tip when using a shoot, especially on a server, be very careful with it because it does tend to have a, this issue where if there's uh, no, no room for things to go, it can start to build up items depending on where you're dropping them. So just bear in mind when using a shoot, you wanna make sure you have everything set up so it's voiding things. So that way you don't end up with an overflow. Oh, this is satisfying. Oh, the whole tree's down. Oh, I love this tree farm. Now, one quick thing to note with this, once it gets up and running, you want to be sure to break the connection to the portable interface and all of that that's connected here. Otherwise, you'll end up with saplings spilling all over the place. Uh, it will be self-sufficient once you get it all nice and up and running, so you won't have to worry about that anymore, but definitely don't leave it connected forever. Now, it has been a while since I have used these ender drawers, but I think I want to swap this drawer out right here for an ender drawer. Uh, and like I said, it has been a while since I have used this. So remembering how they link is going to take me a moment. So if I put, oh, I don't want that in there. If I put this in here and I punch this, not right click, but I punch, I can then send the, the frequency to this one. How do I do that? Shift right click, change the drawer frequency. So now these are linked. Okay, so now they're linked together. Does that mean they're linked together if I move one of them? Also, there we go. We have to use a pickaxe. We can't use an axe on them. Okay, I, I think this is correct, and maybe they're still linked together. We'll be able to see. They are not. So if I copy the frequency of this, and then I punch this... Is it going to carry the frequency? <laughs> this is shift right click. So change the drawer frequency. Okay. Store drawer frequency to tool. Stored drawer frequency to tool. Then I, then I, okay. So you punch this and then you shift right click onto the drawer that you want to change it to. Uh, it probably says it right here, but it is kind of covered up, isn't it? Uh, it's a sneak right click in the air to clear the frequency. There we go. And perfect. Okay. So linking drawers and it talks a little bit about the frequency. It says right click in the air to change modes, left click in ender drawer to store, uh, to store it. And then, uh, yeah, to link the drawers to shift right click. Okay. So we do have them linked. So technically to relink, um, if I moved this again, just to make this very clear, because what I want to do is I want to have access to this coal from just about anywhere, right? And this is where these drawers are really, really nice. Um, but to do this, I'm going to need to punch this drawer and then shift right click here. So let's take all of this stuff out. Oh, it's still linked. Okay, so it's still linked, but yeah. So you'd shift right click and they would change the frequency. Okay, but apparently it stays linked even when you moved it. Interesting. So that's kind of cool. So now that we know that, yeah, and it tells me the frequency right here. Uh, that's, it's a cool that it uses like vanilla items. So what I want to do is I want to use it to power some generators later on or use it for really anything. Um, so the fact that we have it set up for later use is perfect. Now I'm in desperate need right now of some lighting. So I'm going to be using the feral flare lanterns. One of my favorite lanterns uh, for this particular setup over here. Uh, I think it's going to be the perfect candidate for it uh, because we don't have a mob farm. But uh, the unfortunate part of using these lamps is that, well, it it, it can affect your mob farm in uh, in some bad ways. So we don't have a mob farm set up just yet. So let's go ahead and uh, just place this down. We can place it right here on the edge, I think. And it's going to find all the dark spots and we can get rid of our torches and it'll light this up. 
gonna be really nice. And I'm gonna get these placed on each one of these platforms, actually. Now, as we start to get closer to the end of today's episode, there is something else that I want to get started and semi-automated. And when I say semi-automated, it's kind of cool what we can actually do. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to need a little bit of slime in order to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grow myself a big boy tree here and uh, collect as much of this as I can. Oh, my ax broke. Of course it did. Will this work? There we go. Uh, I need a little bit of mushroom here. And let's see, this is our witch area. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these in. Of course, this is just going to make blocks of slime. But eventually, we're gonna need netherrack. So this is gonna be in preparation for getting our netherrack up and running. And I was looking, and uh, it seems like the best way to make netherrack that's the least resource intensive is going to most likely be the mechanical drying basin because we can just, in theory, use lava to generate netherrack. Uh, and the way we're gonna do that is by using a specific mechanical drying basin, not a normal one, a mechanical drying basin, and we are going to convert magma blocks into netherrack. And then to get magma blocks is by simply filling up this with lava and it generates magma blocks. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. However, it is going to just do it without need of anything, right? And it does require a little bit of RF to do this. And this is not gonna require redstone. So I think that's a pretty awesome idea, but we are gonna need to get it a little bit into integrated dynamics. And that's where, well, this is going to come into play. I present to you the squeezer and the drying basin. This is the basic startup for integrated dynamics. And this mod, while it can get complicated, is quite easy in essence. Uh, it does have some very practical machines that are very, very useful and very powerful, I think. Uh, but the process of doing this is quite slow. One, you need to, well, grow the tree. That's the, that's the easy part, right? So we'll take the mineral sapling and we just simply grow this tree and then we just need to harvest it down. It is a very weird tree, meaning that when you vein mine, there's still gonna be some logs that get left behind, uh, which is kind of the unfortunate part of this tree. They don't all count as one, which can be kind of a pain. Uh, but you end up getting yourself a couple of things. You end up getting yourself uh, some of these crystallized mineral chunks and mineral berries and of course saplings back, but you also get these mineral logs. The main use for all of the integrated dynamic is going to be these crystal mineral chunks. These are used for everything, but to get them is kind of tedious, right? You don't get very many from a tree, but you can make these blocks inside of a drying basin. However, it requires this process, right? Where you place down the log and then you have to jump in here over and over and over and over and keep jumping until it fills this up. Uh, and then you need to use a redstone signal uh, I guess I could just use a torch. You can use a redstone signal to deactivate this. Usually I end up using a pressure plate. However, this go around, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. This resets it as you can see. I'm going to set up some automation for this and uh, it's kind of funky. I have seen this used. My buddy Darkfan, he was playing the new Create uh, Ar Ar Astral or Arcane Engineering, I think it's called. Uh, and he, was, uh, he had a, a similar setup and I had seen it bounce this uh, armor stand bouncing up and down on this thing. And I was like, I wonder if I could sit down and design a very simple version of that. And so I present to you that. To do this, we need a sticky piston. And then we are going to need three slime blocks, preferably three slime blocks. Uh, so that's why I made the slime. And uh, the reason it's three, I'll show you here in just a moment. Uh, but you can probably use any solid block. But for right now, what we're going to do is place the slime blocks right here, here, and one on top, right? It doesn't seem like much yet, but if we go ahead and place down a block, for example, right here, and I put a redstone torch, this is going to extend. What I need though is a clock that runs back and forth, and I need an armor stand that goes on here. And so what's gonna happen is the armor stand is going to act as me jumping on here. It's really darn cool that this even works. Um, so to make a redstone clock, it is pretty straightforward. Um, so this right here is receiving a signal. So let's receive that signal, but we need to knock this down to its lowest setting. And then we can just move this here and we have ourselves a redstone clock, right? And anytime we want to stop it, we just break this for right now. 
I think you can also use a lever. Now here's the cool part. We can take a hopper and we can put a hopper onto this and we can actually feed this uh, mineral logs. So the logs will then go in and then we need to take this section here and I will place a barrel and then on the barrel, we just put a hopper there and that's going to basically automate this entire setup. So all of the logs now can get converted this way. All we're gonna do is put the redstone here. And as you can see, that is squishing, but it won't fully squish all the way until this is done drying. And when that's done drying, it puts the crystal in here. This is probably the goofiest thing I've ever seen, but also the coolest thing I've ever seen. And we sat in Discord playing around with this, seeing if we can make a very simple version of what I seen my buddy doing. And well, here it is. Now here's the problem. If you don't have this block up here, watch what happens. Yeet, <laughs> it gets thrown up into the top. And of course we don't want that. We don't want the armor stand doing that. We want the armor stand to stay down. And so that's why I typically like to have that extra block up there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this has been pretty fun. And I just wanted to show that and I'm glad I got the chance to. Now, of course, this setup is super temporary. I don't expect to use this forever. Uh, this is just something that I have set up here that uh, we just make the manual process a lot less manual, you know? And that's what it's all about. So with all of this mineral that we have, we can easily now upgrade to the next tier, which is going to require those industrial foregoing, uh, or not industrial foregoing, uh, that's going to require the integrated dynamics. Too many mods with IN in them. Uh, so, <laughs> goodness. Um, so yes, upgrading this. As you can see, it requires these batteries to upgrade and obsidian. And as you can see, it does how much of the mineral it actually required in order to get this. So pretty straightforward. And now we should be able to easily make these machines. And I can probably at this point break this, but it's fun while it lasts. Like it is a very fun little thing to, to have in the world. And uh, of course, if you guys watch to the end of this episode, you got to see it. And uh, yeah, hopefully it helps you out. So after getting these upgraded, now it's pretty straightforward. We have ourselves the mechanical squeezer, which works the same way as a squeezer, except now it's powered. And then we also have the drying basin and that's also powered. Now the main use for the drying basin that I want to do is well, make more of them, but make that setup that I was talking about earlier where we make netherrack. Um, and so that is going to have to wait though till next episode because today we're just well out of time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope you learned something new. Of course, if you did, be sure to share it with me down in the comments below. What did you learn or didn't know from today's video? And maybe let me know something. Maybe there's something that I don't know that you can tell me down in the comments because I learned from you guys more than you could ever imagine. Uh, you guys are definitely filled with all of the tips and tricks that I usually try to share in my videos. So I say thank you guys. Uh, but of course, the best way to say thank you from your end is to click that subscribe button and give this video a huge thumbs up. Now, of course, guys, it is time to thank the amazing supporter of today's video. And that huge shout out is going to Elder Lock. I hope I said that right. 291. Thank you so much for your amazing support. And well, it's now time to run the program and it should update, and there we go. Thank you, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over in the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, or you can just find it linked down in the description below. Join the community today of over 28, pushing 29,000 members and growing every single day from people just like you. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.